Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Michael, KE4EST. And after a delay, that I didn't want it to be this long. Death in the family and a couple other things that's kind of put things behind here. I'm going to show you the code on this dish mover, on this homebrew dish mover. Or show you the code that I've got, okay? And right up front I'll say this is just kind of like an outline I mean what I've got here will compile and run but pretty much I'll just move the dish east and west manually pushing the buttons um, I don't have memory set or anything yet but this is just a basic you know to get you going you know because like you know right up front too this is not a tutorial on Arduino or C++ programming or anything like that I'll be more than glad to help anybody out or whatever and go over anything more, you know, if you're new to this stuff or whatever. Make another video going more detail on something. But right at front, you know, this is this is to get you started. Enough to get you started, and then you can take what I've got and you can rewrite the whole thing, or you can take and add to it. You know, like you won't put some memories. I don't have memories added in here yet. Things like that. So anyway, just you know, keep that in mind for you. As I'm going through this, you know, say, well, wait a minute, where's this or where's that or whatever. Starting at the top here, just some basic stuff. I've got my includes for my libraries. The TFT here. The touch for the TFT display. And EEPROM, we want to have the EEPROM library. Because you want to, you know, keep up with some things. You know, if you have memories or east and west limits, as you can see down here, or your current position. You know, you don't want to unplug the thing or as you're messing with it, using it. Or say this was completely full, built, and ready to go. It's done. It's in a case. It's done. It's, you know, you're not messing with it. You know, tearing it apart and messing with it and piddling with it. And just, just sitting on the shelf, plugged in and working. Power goes off. And a lightning storm or something comes up and the power goes off. The power comes back on. It's back to zero. You know, and you, it's forgot where your dish is at. So you don't want that. So that's why we won't have an EEPROM for sure. And if you're using the Arduino Mega, it's got a built in EEPROM. It's got 4K of EEPROM built into it. Um, a lot of the other ones do. Other microcontrollers, some of them do, some of them don't. If yours don't, you'll have to add that. Which, uh, if you're using something else, you're probably already familiar with a lot of this stuff and know what's going on, but it's not that hard to add. You know, EEPROM chips, buy an EEPROM chip and add that to it. You can get some pretty good size EEPROM chips, way more what you need for this. And an external EEPROM you could even use with this, which I have before in all my projects, because the built in EEPROM is only good, I think, for around 100,000 writes. Um, which depends on what you're doing and take years to use, or you can use it really quick. Like, you know, keeping up with your position as you're moving your dish around. You know, that can be hitting that right on that EEPROM. So, it can get used really, you know, pretty quick. So, an extra, you know, some of these external EEPROM chips, you know, have millions and 10 million write cycles and stuff, depends on how much money you want to spend. And so that can really help out that. But anyway, so we have that. Uh, I've got my pulse in. This is counting the pulses coming off of the read switch on the dish. I've got mine set for A0, no particular reason. It has to be A0. It can be a digital input. I just happen to be using the same board to prototype this. I was using for something else. And I need an analog input, but for this, you don't have to be an analog input. West and east here is your west and east buttons. There'll be inputs and these relays or outputs that eventually go through a transistor or a FED or something to drive your relay. And here's where I've defined my where I want my EEPROM at. You can put yours wherever you want to put it. These fonts is just some fonts. You can skip past this. This is something I put, and I've used these in a lot of programs. Um, and if you just copy and paste this into yours or type some of this in without installing the you know grabbing the external stuff here where it says external and putting it into the UTFT folder, you're going to get a compile error anyway but I'd be glad to help somebody out you know, if they want to do that 
it's pretty simple to do and then we got here we're setting up the UTFT we're calling it I'm gonna call it TFT okay and here's the display I'm using what pins I'm using for the touch this is the current version and then here's my globals I've got set up here for different things and like I, you know, what I'll do is I'll kind of go through this. I don't want this video to get really long because if somebody's kind of sort of interested in this, but they see, oh, that video is an hour long. Ah, uh, never mind. But if somebody's, you know, really interested in it, they ain't going to care if it's three hours. But if somebody's like, I don't know. But they say, oh, an hour long video. Eh, I don't know about that. You know, so I'm going to try to keep this as a quick overview if anybody wants anything more detailed I'll make another video or go slower over this or whatever um, then my setup of course my pin modes here pulse in west and east will be inputs west and east relays and output initializing the TFT turn the backlight on definitely don't forget to do that um, and then we're gonna set the font here clear the screen set my touch this is just like a little they're not really a splash screen but stuff I've got stuck on mine you see I still have it, it says January I don't have it set up to go grab a date or anything um, you know we could go and change that now or whatever as if when you look back at video one you see the very top of the screen you'll see that and dish mover beta that's just all that is we don't even have to have that Setting the background, foreground colors, and now, and because see, I wanted this to be using big fonts, so I can get that, and big fonts really not that big, um, but I wanted that up at the top of the screen, and then I'm gonna change to this font to show you know it's a little bigger. To let's see, what did why have I got? I don't understand. I guess I was going to use this and change my mind to use this. And I didn't take that one out for some odd reason. Because there's no reason. I, I set this one and switched to that one. <laughs> can take that out. And then here we are. You know, when it first fires up in your setup, you want it to go in you know a couple things you want to do and one thing is like I was talking about go and grab your current position and put that so in so the di you know remember where the dish was at and then your wet east and west limits here definitely you know put that in there and then of course anything else you want to go ahead and read in if you want to when you set that up yourself and then set up notice the capital here this setup is under initialize tab I think here yes and this just sets up my screen it prints west on the screen and east on the screen you'll do yours however you want to do yours and draw buttons is right here that puts the buttons on the screen uh, let me go back to initialize see this puts some buttons on the screen too and this is buttons see like I said this is kind of a work in progress eventually I will move all this over to where it says buttons for draw buttons and then this initialize you know like right now I can move that over there and comment out this setup but I left it in there because I want to go in if I want to splash screen or you know things like that so I just put something in there for now and then here's the loop okay we're at the loop it goes and grabs the current position, which is down here. I think, yeah. That's sets everything up, whatever, you know, with the prom grab put position in there. It's print that on the screen. You know, it's got it up here. Where it went to the EEPROM and read in and put it into the this variable here, POS. Oops, let's not move nothing around there. Um where it put it in POS, but it now we got it printed on the screen okay and then here as this loops looping through we are going to and of course this can change too all the time so that's why it's in the loop 
let's scan and see if any of these buttons have been pressed. And then we got West. If West is not blocked, okay, and you can see it, this whole thing here, right here, from here to here. If West is not blocked, okay, and then we go down here and say if West, which is right, no, 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 let's see. West is right here. What this does is read the button. Okay. Or West Touch. Which this scan for wet for touch west checks for West Touch. If either one of those is a one, okay, then we say east block is equal to one. Go ahead and block the east of the east you don't want to push both but you know both relays kicking at the same time and then it's going to go west active which is over here and if there's not a position error then digital right west relay one so I'm turn the relay on draw you know this is drawing west on the screen and here is where I've got the pulse error check and I've got it set for a thousand right now for testing. You know, you want to set that for like 300 milliseconds, maybe 500 milliseconds at the most. And what that's doing is it's saying, let's look for a pulse coming in. Is there a pulse coming in within 300 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds? Right now, I've got it for testing a thousand milliseconds or you know one second. If I don't see a pulse by then, let's throw air on the screen. And let's shut that relay off because we don't want. And we're not seeing a pulse maybe the dish is actually moving but we don't see that it's moving and we're gonna flop the dish or break something or whatever so we want to stop and throw air on the screen and say hey something's wrong here the dish is not moving or if it is I don't see that it's moving so it wants to see those counts coming in okay and let's see that's only if that happens and if pulse which I have in the main. If po <clears throat> if positive pulse is ready, then position be plus plus. If it's positive pulse, position pulse ready is equal to zero. Okay, no, this is positive. I should change that. This is positive pulse ready is equal to zero, and zero pulse ready is equal to one. Get time. Okay, so we go get the time again. Else if zero pulse is ready. Okay, so let me explain this real quick. Maybe you can see it a little bit better what's going on, especially if you step through the code a little bit more. Okay, so what's going on here is, and pulse is over here. Pulse is just digital read the pulse in. Okay. We've got a positive pulse and a zero pulse. As If you was to put an oscilloscope on that pulse, as the dish is spinning and watching them pulses come in it would be a square wave on the screen you have a positive pulse or it'd be to zero it'd be you know plus five volts or zero plus five volts or zero plus five volts or zero as that switch is opening and closing opening and closing opening and closing <clears throat> okay so we see a positive pulse now we want to start looking for a neg you know not we're not necessarily a negative pulse it ain't gonna go below zero but we want to see zero we want to see that switch open so if the switch closes we get five volts okay this is going to say five volts our position is going to increment and then now we're getting the time up here but we're checking and we're looking for a zero within a thousand milliseconds like i've got set right now if we don't see a zero then shut off Okay, and the same thing if it's a zero, let's look for a positive. And so it just repeats that back and forth looking because the reason is, you know, most things, you know, a project you're doing or a, something way it would work, you're just looking for, you know, a switch to be pressed, you know, a positive pulse. Okay, if not, don't do anything. With this, we want to look back and forth for zero or positive because what if you're pushing the button to move the dish and the dish stops? 
and you let go of the button, this stops. Okay, is that read switch going to stop open or closed? You know, it's just going to be really kind of random. We you know what what position. You know, when you hit the, you want to let go of that button, so you want to kill that relay, stop the dish. Well, did that stop with the zero or you know open or closed? So if you're just always looking for a positive pulse, you know, that switch may be open, but something's wrong out there. But the dish is moving, the motor's running. But you're still, well, I guess we'll sit here and wait for a positive pulse. You know, and you're like, well, I don't see a positive pulse. That's air and timeout. All right, it's working great. What if that dish stops with... The switch closed you've got a positive pulse oh okay good we've got that positive pulse is it just gonna you know you've got to I hope you're getting you understand I hope I'm getting this across good if it's closed and we're getting a positive pulse already okay we're not gonna wait for a positive pulse because it's there we want to start looking for a negative you know the zero pulse don't see it in that switch open and if it don't open within a thousand milliseconds, you know, or 300 milliseconds or whatever here, you know, we want to shut everything down and throw an error on the screen. So this is what this is doing. You got to look for both. You know, you got to make sure that you're not just looking for one or the other. And then if we let go of the button right here, back, go back to here, else if I let go of the button uh, we're gonna unblock east take the block off the east so it can be used and go to west not active so we can just you know go to west not active and stop everything so west not active is here that just kinda cleans it up clears where I've got west off the screen but you know however you want to set that up set up our time stuff here in our area stuff error checking and clear that up okay and turn the relay off. Stop the dish. So, I mean, that's pretty much it right there. I don't have anything set up, you know, in the menu, or you know, have a. You would want to at some point you'll have another thing in here in your loop, or um, when the buttons are pushed east or west here. You see, east is doing the same thing. Oh, wait, that's touch. West, east. Here's east. Same thing, but east. And we're counting back the other way. And you're also going to one thing, you know, where you're uh, say checking for, you know, your east and west limits. If your west limit is set for 400, and we're counting up and counting up, and it hits that 400, we want it to stop, you know. So you gotta be, you'll have to add that into the loop too, when you're pushing these buttons to, hey, let's look for that. And if that happens, let's throw an error and shut everything down too, and say, hey, we've hit the west limit, we've hit the east limit. So there's more stuff to be done to this, and this is just like I said, kind of like a, if you want to call it an outline. All right, so I hope you understood everything and kind of see where I'm going with this, and you know, I kind of flew through it a little bit, but. I mean, there's not a whole lot here really yet, but uh, now I want to see yours. I want, you know, somebody's out there got to build this or set something up and start messing with it. There's another guy, there's a thread somewhere on the satellite, guys. Another guy's doing a, one of these too, and his is set up, of course, different than mine. He's got some neat little things. He's got, you know, really got almost a finished product, or does have a finished product. He keeps tweaking it. Um, and his even has the uh, dissect commands it's reading dissect commands I'm going to set that up with this um, so and I think the last time uh, well let's see I can't remember what he said last time I talked to him in a private message um, but I think he does want to come in here and add to some of this stuff too you know but you can also you know in the code, if you're using, you know, we use a FED or something or whatever, you can get into pulsing that thing with PWM and slowly take that dish off or slowly, you know, 
you know, have it get ready to stop if, you know, if you're pushing buttons manually and let it go. You can either have it manually, when you're doing manually, have it gear down or just abruptly stop. But it'd be nice to when you have memory set up, you know, it's easier on things. You push a button and it slowly takes off or, you know, tell, I want to go to memory 24. Slowly takes off just a little bit. They don't have to, you know, take 10 minutes to get up to speed, but, you know, just a couple seconds go from dead stop to full speed. And then when it's almost down, say your count set for 300, memory it's going to be at 300 to count. When it gets to like um, what, 290 or 295 or something, it starts turning the voltage back, pulsing that voltage back so that it kind of comes to a, a slow stop. You know, so there's there's so many things that can be done with this, and you can set your menu up. We can go in and change this time here, this 1,000 milliseconds. You can instead of having to go in here, set it up, recompile it, upload it to your unit, go in there and just have this in a menu setting to adjust this if you need to. Uh, you know, and you want to have something to go in there and just reset a global reset, reset everything back to zero, or just you know clear out your east and west limits or you know all kinds of things or shift everything one way or there you got mess with this and move stuff and you go refine where 89 west is at now let's shift everything in memory to you know it was set for 25 on the count now we at 32 so let's shift everything seven you know so so many things to do and it'd be a lot of fun so i want to see what everybody else does and see what you come up with and i'll be glad to answer any questions or make another video or whatever but anyway that's it for now so i hope this helped you out let me know uh, go to satellite guys leave your comments i'll have the link below here where the thread is so everybody can discuss this until the next video this is Michael, K-E-4-E-S-T, 73.